Good morning and welcome everybody to uh, Environmental Design Group, a little video blog. I want to introduce and welcome George Sendry. And my name is Dwayne Grohl, president of Environmental Design Group. And today I'm going to talk with George Sendry, uh, water resource engineer extraordinaire. Um, George is one of, the, one of our engineers that leads the charge here and can talk about anything related to water, whether it's water molecules, uh, what's happening with a pump that's not functioning, bacteria in a wastewater plant, or uh, stormwater as it's coming across the, uh, a collapsed culvert. And so uh, when I looked up engineer in the um, online dictionary the other day, there was George's picture next to it. He is the consummate engineer with uh, years of experience. And we've worked together uh, over the past uh, four or five years and uh, just enjoy working with George every day. But George has come up with a solution that I wanted to pick his brain on this morning, which is something that is challenging to, I think, all of us engineers out there from the time we get out of college uh, with our engineering degree. And it is that yin and yang between um, designing the ultimate project and the perfect project and the constraints of time and dollars. So we're, um, you're an engineer and you're working for a mayor in a city and the mayor says, gotta get this project done and you got a month to do it. And you're but like, well, I wanna, but I'm not quite there yet and I wanna spend more time researching and designing the project. Or you're working in a manufacturing plant, designing bottles or in a, designing an automobile. And there's this push and pull to designing the, the perfect project and having plenty of time to the constraint time and dollars and so George has developed this thought process that works um, amazingly in a simple question and I want to introduce George and the concept of Tesla versus Westinghouse so George good morning and uh, maybe you can start off by giving us the background on two iconic people Mr. Tesla and Mr. Westinghouse Good morning, everybody. Uh, as Dwayne said, the uh, you know when, when I first heard this story, it really resonated with me, and I, I think it applies a lot to what we have to do. And that's the story of the Tesla and Westinghouse, and it it's related to you know the, the infamous current wars between AC and DC power. So uh, you know Tesla was a, a dreamer, a consummate engineer guy, came up with basically the you know, created the AC motor, the same basic AC motor that we use today. So at the time it was Tesla and Westinghouse versus a guy named Edison. Edison was a DC power guy. So uh, there's a lot of very fascinating stuff about that time in history and you go back and forth. But what the, the, the crux of the story for me was uh, Tesla had started working, George Westinghouse went and purchased the, the patents for Tesla's motors so he paid him for that paid him for the patent and then agreed to a royalty for every thousand horsepower he got a certain amount so uh, they were working together competing back and forth uh, and it came time to compete for the bid for the 1893 World's Fair it's gonna be the first electric uh, full electric fair so they were competing bids when Westinghouse putting together his bid, he had a hard time coming up with, uh, he wanted to make sure he beat uh, a newly formed company, a little company called GE, was backing Westinghouse, DC Power. AC Power is cheaper because its wires are smaller uh, and all that sort of thing, but he was concerned and he had trouble getting financing because of all the royalties you would have had to pay Tesla. So he goes to Tesla and says, well, I'm having trouble. And Tesla was so concerned that his idea would not be not see the be shown to the world and finally win he just rips up the agreement <laughs> so westinghouse says thank you very much goes on the world's fair is a great success and after that like 80 percent of the industrial electric manufacturing in the, in the united states is ac power and the world is ac power so with that one decision you know tesla goes off and ultimately years later dies penniless in a new york hotel room and westinghouse goes on to form a little company called westinghouse and hugely famous and, and to me it, it materializes the okay you know you're the engineer guy you're fixing things oh sure you, know, you make a business decision that you know oh i don't need to pay these uh, royalties or these royalties aren't that important and i don't you know you don't know whether westinghouse said can we reduce it but tesla's response is the typical you know engineer response okay just get rid of it we're done 
but he winds up broken penniless, dying penniless. So when we're designing things, I put it on a matrix, Tesla or Westinghouse. During the design process, working on projects, you know, 85% Tesla. Budget, you know, blah, blah, blah. But you can't totally ignore the Westinghouse part of, can they afford it? You know, are we going to go over budget? All that sort of thing, because you know, we still have to have a business that we run. So that's, that's kind of how I do it. And I approach all decisions with, is this a Tesla decision or a Westinghouse decision? When you come to decisions during projects. And I think it's been great. I heard about this about a year and a half. I was talking to uh, the director of water resources. He says, well, I work with George and this Tesla Westinghouse. And so we have, we talk about it regularly with our engineers. It's like, are you making a Westinghouse decision or Tesla? And so I was fascinated about that. And, and a proof in point is about a month ago, George and I were working on a project. And George emails me and says, hey, you got a minute? I, I just got a, I got a Tesla Westinghouse question and it's like so I called him and he's like yeah I'm just kind of stuck here which way do I go am I Tesla on this or am I Westinghouse and it was it was so clear and it was such an easy conversation and it was so easy to see where we were at and so George just needed a little bounce back feedback which we gave and in like 30 seconds we were on our way um but we just wanted to share that little um little thought process with the world and all those all all of our fellow engineers out there when uh, she or he is, you know, stuck in something in that in that uh, in that conflict, so to speak, between you know, in the conflict in your mind, how to balance that? And so we want to share that with the world. So I would encourage you, as engineers out there, whether you're just starting off or whether you've got 40 years in the industry, to take this forward and ask yourself that question or ask a fellow engineer: Are you Tesla today, or are you Westinghouse? And it may solve your problem. So. I want to thank George for uh, sharing his story on uh, a little tool that he used, a little thought process, a little leadership thought process that he utilizes on a regular basis with his team and other engineers out there to help us get to one of the fundamental challenges that we face as engineers. So George, thanks very much for taking the time today. It was awesome to hear the story, a little bit of history going back to 1893, and maybe we can go forward to 2093 with this little thought process and please share it with uh, your fellow engineers as you hear this story. Thank you very much. George, have a great day. You. And are you Westinghouse this afternoon or are you Tesla? I'm still mostly Tesla. I got, they have problems to solve and you know, there's always a little bit of, a little bit of Westinghouse because you got to keep track of things. But generally I go through, you know, is like Dwayne's point, we go to school not to, you know, worry about invoices or project budgets. You can be an engineer because you love to solve problems. And how do I, how do I do this? So, but then you have to come into the, you know, eventually you get to the pencils down where you're making something different, not better. And that's, that's where the engineering judgment comes in. But you have to be, you know, I say I'm like 85% Tesla all the time just because Tesla's cool. But uh, you got to be a little bit of Westinghouse. Otherwise you're going to, wind up like Tesla. <laughs> Thanks, George. Thanks for the insight. Thanks for all your hard work and all the communities that we serve out there. Have a great day.